Okay, in today's lesson, section 4.7 out of our text, we're going to talk about inverse trig functions. Um, one important note before we get started, um, inverse trig functions, uh, we'll look at inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are not reciprocal trig functions, and we're not talking about cosecant, secant, and cotangent here. Uh, we're talking about the actual inverses of sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, Okay, so the first one start. we'll look at is sine's inverse function. Uh, inverse sine, otherwise uh, known as sometimes arc sine. Uh, Notation-wise, there's two ways we can see it. Uh, we're used to, familiar with seeing this negative one exponent notation, which means inverse. So if I were to read this, I would just read it as y equals sine inverse of x. Um, the other way we sometimes see this, you might see it as y equals... arc sine x. Um, these two here mean the same. Okay, so let's talk about um, sine's inverse function. Now first of all, um, if you recall from back in, in uh, college algebra, we talked about functions that have inverses and the only kinds of functions that have inverses are functions that pass a horizontal line test. Uh, well the sine function is a wave function. It would continue you know, going up and down, etc., as it goes left and right. So it would not pass a horizontal line test if we took the whole thing. So what we do is we chop most of it off. Okay, if we only look between negative and positive pi over two, and we don't go beyond those marks, well, then it passes a horizontal line test everywhere, and it therefore has an inverse. Just this little piece of it has an inverse. And the inverse of this function is what we call sine inverse, or arc sine. Um, now, how did we find inverse functions, if you would recall? Um, you take all the xy points, you know, say this point here, negative pi over 2 comma negative 1. Uh, this point, 0, 0. This point up here, pi over 2 comma 1. Um, anyway, we take all the points on this graph of sine x, all the xy points, and we interchange them. All the y's become x's, all the x's become y's. So this negative pi over 2 comma negative 1 becomes the point negative 1 comma negative pi over 2. Okay? Uh, 0, 0 becomes 0, 0. This point up here becomes 1 comma pi over 2. And when we uh, interchange all these x and y values of every point there, we create a graph that looks like this. Um, now the domain of this graph is negative 1 to 1. Um, so the inverse sine function can only take input that is between or including negative 1 and 1. So you couldn't do sine inverse of 2 or sine inverse of negative 3. Wouldn't work. Uh, the range of this function is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, that's the y values from the bottom up to the top. That we'll have to talk about quite a bit when we work through some problems to, to get a real firm understanding of what that means, what kind of answers arc sine can have. Okay, let's look at some examples then of arc sine. Okay, the directions here say to evaluate without using a graphing calculator. So we don't want to type them into the calculator. You'll notice on your graphing calculator, though, um, above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons are the sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tan inverse buttons. So they're there, um, but without using a calculator, can we do this? Okay, so first of all, um, what does this mean? Okay, let's understand what sine inverse of one half means first. Well, what it means is, I'm trying to find, you know, when I'm trying to solve this, I'm trying to find the sine of what angle theta that gives me a value of one half. Okay, um, so it's it's like evaluating off of the unit circle, but evaluating off the unit circle in reverse. Um, so I have to think um, sine. Sine is the y coordinates of all the points. 
I have to think at what places on the unit circle, at what angles on the unit circle does do I find y values of a half? Let's state it like that. Um, well, there's a y value of a half at pi over 6 and a y value of a half at 5 pi over 6. Uh, if you don't know them and you can't see them that quick, um, just get out a copy of your unit circle and you'll find them there. Look at the, the x, y ordered pair points and you're looking for a y value of positive half. So there's two of them. Well, this doesn't have two answers. It only has one answer. The question is which of these two is the answer? And in order to, to answer that question, uh, we have to consider the range of this inverse sine. Let's do it on a graph. Um, okay, here's 0, here's pi over 2, here's pi, here's 3 pi over 2, etc. You know, we can go all the way around the circle. Well, uh, the range for this function, again, it was on the other slide, we'll just write it down here, is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I know where pi over 2 is. Pi over 2 is up to the top, 90 degrees counterclockwise, right? Um, so negative pi over 2 should be the same amount but in the opposite direction. Um, so this 3 pi over 2 is the same as negative pi over 2 backwards. Okay, so essentially I'm looking for an angle that is anywhere on the right side of my graph between 90 degrees in the negative direction and 90 degrees in the positive direction. Negative to positive pi over 2. And so I think to myself, where are these angles here? Well, pi over 6 would plot here. 5 pi over 6 plots out over here and the quadrant 2. 5 pi over 6 is not on this side of the graph. Therefore, 5 pi over 6 is out and the answer is just pi over 6. Okay, another one. Um, again, what does this mean first? It means the sine of what angle has a value of negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so um, where can I find a y value of negative square root of 3 over 2? And I would find a y value at 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay, so where are those? One of those two angles is on the side that I want. One of those two is on the side I don't want. I'll throw that one out. Uh, so 4 pi over 3. If you look on your unit circle, if you need to, uh, 4 pi over 3 is down here into quadrant 3. Okay, 4 pi over 3 is out. Um, 5 pi over 3. I'll go ahead and mark up here on this graph. 5 pi over 3 is right here. Um, so 5 pi over 3 is the right location. It's not the right value. Um, 5 pi over 3 is the angle I get to when I start there and wrap around to here. I don't want that angle because it goes through these quadrants that I don't want, that I can't use. I want instead this angle. Okay, so I have to think, how much am I going backwards? How much in the negative direction to get to here? And the answer is easily found just by looking at um, the one that is positive on the other direction. This angle right here would be positive pi over 3. Okay, this one is the same distance up as this one is down, so the answer that I want is actually not 5 pi over 3, but negative pi over 3. Okay. Um, same location, but just instead of going um, around counterclockwise, I'm going clockwise in the negative direction, the correct direction. Okay, the last one. Uh, sine inverse of pi over 2. Well, first of all, let's think of this number. If you were to do pi over 2 on your calculator, 
that would be like 3.14 divided by 2. It's approximately 1.57. Remember we said the domain is only negative 1 to 1. I can't do the sine inverse of anything outside of this domain. Uh, so this actually is not possible. Okay, next let's look at inverse cosine. Uh, we'll go a little faster now because all the notation is the same. It's either um, cosine to this negative one notation which is red cosine inverse or we could see y equals arc cosine of x. Uh, same deal here. Um, we had to pass a horizontal line test in order to have an inverse function. So we had to, to chop off a lot of this graph. We had to restrict what we're looking at just between 0 and pi in order to make this work. And just like with the inverse sign, we take all these x, y points, for instance, pi comma negative 1, and we invert it to negative 1 comma pi. And notice all we do is just interchange the x and y's. And if we do that at every point on this graph, we produce this graph over here. Uh, now the domain for this graph is negative 1 to 1. Same as inverse sine. The range for this graph is different, however. Uh, its bottom value is right here at 0. Its top value is up here at pi. And in some respects, uh, you're going to find that a little bit easier because you won't have to deal with any negative angles like we did with uh, inverse sine. Okay, now let's look at inverse tangent. Um, I right, take my tangent graph and you know there are our asymptotes right here at the pi over 2's, if you recall. Um, I only look between one pair of asymptotes because if I had another asymptote out here and another tan, then well then it wouldn't pass the horizontal line test anymore. So we just look between these two asymptotes at, at the, the half pi's uh, here. And same thing, I take all these x, y points and I interchange them and so it creates this graph, a graph that actually has uh, horizontal asymptotes. Okay. Uh, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. There is no x value excluded in the domain of inverse tan. The range is very similar to inverse sines. Uh, the only difference is, it's the same values down here, the only difference is uh, we don't include the endpoints because they're asymptote values here. But otherwise you can um, use negative angles just like with that inverse sine function.